Welcome back to my algebra lessons. In this lesson today, we're gonna to talk about synthetic division. All right, synthetic division is an easier way to divide. Um, it has a few steps involved, but it can only be used at certain times. Now you can only use synthetic division when you're dividing by the binomial X minus K. Um, so basically it has to be linear and it can be plus or minus. Um, so basically if it was X minus two, in this case, your K is equal to two. But if it was X, say plus three, it's not written exactly in this form, but you can make it be written in this form. So you would write it as X minus a negative three. And so in this case, your K will be negative three. So if you're dividing by something that's either X minus a number or X plus a number, then you can use synthetic division. In this case, if it's X minus that number, basically the K is gonna be the opposite of this sign. So you see this is minus two, the K is positive two. This is plus three, the K is negative three. So in order to use synthetic division, you gotta be dividing by something that look like one of these, all right? So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you the steps on how to use synthetic division. It sounds like a lot when I tell you the steps, but when you actually do it, it's actually really easy, okay? So instead of me listing all the steps out now, I'm gonna go through an example and go step by step in that example. In this first example, we want to take 5x to the third minus 6x squared minus 28x minus two and divide it by x plus two. So we are dividing by something of the form x minus k. So if I was to rewrite this, this would be x minus a negative two. So in this case, my k is negative two. Again, remember k is gonna be the opposite of whatever this sign is. So what you want to do is you want to start off by writing your K in a half box. So this is my half box. That's the first part. And then you want to list the coefficients of the dividend, which is what you're dividing by. You want to list all the coefficients of the dividend right after that half box. So five, negative six, negative 28, and negative two. Now you want to make sure, one of the important things with synthetic division is you want to make sure that you have a coefficient for every exponent. So this is x to the third, this should be x squared, this should be x to the first, which is just x, and this should be x to the zero, which is just a constant term. And the reason I say that is because if there is a term missing, you have to put a zero in its place or else you'll get the wrong answer, all right? So that's step one. Step one, write k in a half box and list all the coefficients of the dividend after that half box. Okay, so then for step two, what you wanna do is you wanna draw a line, not directly under the first row, but imagine there's a second row and a third row, and this line is supposed to separate the second and the third row. So this is row one, here's row two, and here's row three. So you wanna draw that line, and then step three, what you wanna do, is you wanna drop this first coefficient down to the third row, all right? So all of this is just setting it up. We got our K, we got our coefficients, we got our line to separate the second and third row. We've dropped the first coefficient down. So now here's where the strategy comes in. Every time a number is in the third row, you wanna multiply by K. When you multiply by K, you're gonna write the result in the next row, in the next column in the second row. So negative two times five is negative 10. So I wanna write negative 10 in the next column on the second row. Now, every time there's a number in the second row or two numbers on top of each other, you want to add them together. So you're going to add negative 6 and negative 10, and that gives you negative 16. And then you just repeat that process till you get all the way to the end. So negative 2 times negative 16 is positive 32. So write it in the second row, next column. Two numbers on top of each other, add them together. Negative 28 plus 32 is four. This number is in the third row, so multiply by k. Negative two times four is negative eight. Two numbers on top of each other, add them together. Negative two plus negative eight is negative 10. So this bottom row here is actually the coefficients of your quotient, which means your answer. And this last number that I put a half box around is the remainder. So this is your remainder. These are the coefficients of your quotient. So now since I had a third degree polynomial being divided by a first degree polynomial, my answer is gonna be a second degree polynomial. So think about your properties of exponents. When you do x to the third divided by x, you subtract the exponent. So it's gonna be one less. So whenever you do synthetic division, your quotient is always gonna be one degree less 
than the um, degree of the dividend, the number that's the, uh, the polynomial that's on top, my bad. So my answer is going to be an x to the square polynomial, and this is going to be the coefficient of that. So this is 5x to the square. 5x to the second, this will be minus 16x, and this will be plus 4, because you always start with the highest exponent and go down in um, the exponents. And then with the remainder, you have to write the remainder over the divisor. So the divisor is what you were dividing by, x plus 2. So this is what your solution would be. 5x squared minus 16x plus 4 plus a negative 10 over x plus 2. Now you can also put that negative right here and make it minus 10 over x plus 2. Either way, it's still the same thing. Let's try another example. Example 2, we want to do 4x to the third minus 15x squared plus 11x minus 10 divided by x minus 3. So again, I want to start by writing my k followed by the coefficient. So my k is going to be the opposite of this number, um, 3. That's a negative 3, so my k is going to be a positive 3. Then I'm going to write my coefficients. My coefficients will be 4, negative 15, 11, and negative 10. Now, one way you can know to make sure that you have all of your um, coefficients is you look at the highest exponent. Highest exponent is 3. You should have one more than the highest exponent number of coefficients. So 4, do I have 4 coefficients? Yes, I do have 4 coefficients. So once you have it set up, remember you write, draw your line to separate rows 2 and 3. Drop your first coefficient down, which is 4. Every time you have a number here, you want to multiply by k. So 3 times 4 is 12. Every time you have two numbers on top of each other, you want to add them. Negative 15 plus 12 is negative 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 11 minus 9 is 2. It's numbers in the third row multiplied by k. 3 times 2 is 6, right in here. And negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4. So this row is the coefficients of your quotient. We were dividing a third degree polynomial. So that means my quotient is going to be one less than that, a second degree polynomial. So that means my quotient is 4x squared minus 3x plus 2. And since I have a remainder of negative 4, it's going to be plus negative 4 over the divisor, which is x minus 3. So this is my final answer to this problem. Right, example 3, we're going to do another one. x to the 4th minus 3x to the 3rd minus 4x squared plus 12x divided by x minus 2. My k is going to be 2, positive 2 because it's the opposite of this sign. My coefficients are 1, negative 3, negative 4, and 12. My degree is four, so that means I should have five coefficients. If you can, I only have one, two, three, four coefficients. That means I'm missing a term. So I have an x to the fourth, an x to the third, an x to the second, an x to the first, but I don't have an x to the zero, which is the constant term. So that means I need to add a zero here. So it's like a zero x. So I add a zero onto the end. And then I go through the process, drop down the one, 2 times 1 is 2, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, 12 plus a negative 12 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, add those together you get 0 on the end. It's a fourth degree polynomial so my solution or my quotient is going to be a third degree, one degree less. So this is 1x to the third which is just x to the third minus 1x to the second, which is just x to the second, and then minus 6x. So this would be my final solution, x to the third minus x squared minus 6x. So that's how you will work it. If you have a missed, in, a missed in turn, you put a zero in its place and continue working it. Now I want you to try this one. See if you can divide this one using synthetic division. So pause the video for a moment and see what you get. All right, let's see how you work it. So our k is negative 2, so you should have started with negative 2 because it's the opposite of that sign. Your coefficients are 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, and 1. It's a fifth degree polynomial, so you should have six coefficients. And we actually have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are no missing terms. Draw your line, drop your 1, and start multiplying. That's negative 2, that's 1, that's negative 2, that's 0, that's 0, that's 2, that's negative 4, negative 1. 2 and that's 3 and so your answer should be a fourth degree polynomial so you should have got x to the fourth plus x to the third 
there's no x squared plus 2x minus 1 with the remainder of 3. So 3 over x plus 2. So this should be your final solution. Did you get it right? Hopefully you got it right. If this video was helpful, make sure you hit the like button. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And also hit the bell so you can get no notifications when I release new videos. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to share this video with someone in your class if, you're, if you found it helpful. Thank you.